What's shaking booktube? My name's Cam. Welcome back to another video. Today I just want to have a chat with you about sponsorships, uh, getting books sent to you for free for review, and Amazon wish lists or wish lists in general. It's kind of become a thing on Twitter lately. I just want to have a quick chat about that. This isn't really a discussion video like most of the other ones I would do when stuff like this happens. This is actually more so just a video of me telling you how my channel is going to be in terms of sponsorships and free books and stuff like, well, the wish list thing is a bit different. I'll get to that towards the end of the video. And you know, we can, we can all agree that there's more than a surplus of discussion videos about sponsorships on booktube at the moment. I don't really have anything more to add to it. But if I'm going to be telling you about how all that stuff is going to work on my channel, I may as well just tell you my opinions on it because it's, it's pretty brief. When it comes to sponsorships and I'm talking about being paid to promote something on your channel, not like being sent a book for free to give it a review. I mean, literally being paid by a company to shout them out. I can honestly say I don't have a problem with it, even on booktube, as long as it's very clear and the booktuber in question makes it very clear that it is an ad because that's what it is. It's an advertisement. And I get that part of promoting a company's service or something like that is you kind of have to be like, I love this so much. It's very useful, blah, blah, blah. But if that's your shtick and you're really just trying to convince us that you love something that we can clearly see you've used for 10 minutes. Everyone's going to see right through you. You got to remember, people have been watching your channel for God knows how long, hearing you specifically talk about things you like and you don't like, books. It's not going to be too hard to see when you're bullshitting, you know? So yeah, I'm cool with ads, Um, as long as it's, you know, it's clear that it's an ad, whatever. I don't, I don't mind, I get it. You got to make that bread, my dude. Or as Peter would say... You gotta bring home the bagels. The fuck was that all about, right? <laughs> Just lastly, on the topic of my view on sponsorships, I would say that there are people who do sponsorships very well. For example, I think the channel Drew Gooden, he's not a booktuber, but he's a pretty big YouTube channel. He does sponsorships so well because it's like a separate part of the video. It's usually like a skit. I just used SeatGeek myself to order two tickets to see my favorite sports team, the Miami Dolphins, get their butts kicked by a far superior Vikings team in Minnesota in December. Touchdown! And he's pretty blunt about the fact that he's doing it for money, like he is promoting something in exchange for monetary gain. So as far as sponsorships on my channel, I would say I would be open to it in future, but it would have to be something that I see as genuinely useful. If it's something completely unrelated to the demographic that my booktube and authortube videos are aiming to, then I'm just, I'm not going to do it. Even if there's money involved, it's just, it's not relevant to my channel and I don't want my channel to be a billboard. That's not what this is. If I can make a bit of money promoting something that I think people that watch my videos might actually use, then great. Everyone wins. I, I like, like money. money. But at the end of the day, this is my channel. 100% my channel. You're in my house now, bitch. This is my platform. It is not a platform for other companies or businesses or services to sell their shit. Now, being a booktube channel, getting sent books for free is something that is just pretty much inevitably going to happen after you hit like the 1,000 subscriber mark. And, and with each increment of 1,000 subscribers, I've noticed it becomes more and more frequent. And my opinion on people doing uh, book reviews for books that they're sent for free is pretty much the same as sponsorships, as long as you're incredibly transparent about the fact that you were sent the book for free. And I would hope that you are being honest when you review the book. But here's the thing, and here's why I am making the decision right now that at Wolfshop Publishing, I will not be reviewing books that are sent to me for free. And yes, I am referring to big publishers. It's just, I'm, I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to put a little asterisk there, and the asterisk is I will only review the book that is sent to me for free if it is something I've explicitly made clear that I intended to read anyway. Like if it's a Joe Hill book, I'm going to end up reading it anyway and reviewing it on my channel. So if it's sent to me for free, I'm not going to not do that out of spite. But ever since I kind of went over the 5,000 subscriber mark, I started getting uh, messages from publishers saying, you know, what's your PO box address? Can we send you this new book to review for us? And it's books that, to be honest, I hadn't heard of. And I, I'd looked them up and sometimes they would sound interesting. Sometimes it would just be something I was not really all that interested in reading at all. And there was a part of me that was like, well, it's free. And all I have to do is, you know, 
review it on a book channel. It would be stupid for me to say no, but then I kind of remembered that I'm a mood reader. I just, at the end of the day, getting a book for free just isn't worth enough to me to read something that I'm not interested in reading. Even if it's something that I might be interested in reading in the future and I'm just not interested now, I just, if I don't want to do it, I'm just not going to do it, you know? But even more importantly than that, going back to my view on other booktubers doing free book reviews, I just don't know how plausible it is to give a genuine book review if you know that the people behind the book are going to be watching you. I've said a lot recently that during the month of August, I read pretty much everything that Veronica Roth has put out because at the very start of September, I interviewed her for the Brisbane Writers Convention, and that was an amazing experience. Veronica Roth as a person is absolutely fantastic, but I made the decision after doing that. I was going to review all of her books on my channel because it was all I'd read at that point, but I literally got to the point where I sat down in front of the camera to do it, and I realized that I now had a bias, and that bias was very clear to me, and it was just this little voice in the back of my head saying, what if Veronica Roth watched it and saw that I didn't like this book as much as she probably hoped I did? Or I would be thinking to myself, what if I say I don't like this about the book and then Harper Collins never invites me to do interviews or blah, blah, blah. I just don't know if I can believe that when you were sent something for free, there is not going to be some kind of bias attached to that. Even if it's a small bias, when you get sent something for free, you know that their eyes are going to be on you. And I just don't know if you can be 100% honest when that's the case. I just, I at least know that much for me. So that's why I'm making the decision that I'm not doing free book reviews. I should clarify, I'm not doing paid book reviews either. I'm not, do I don't think anyone should do paid reviews of anything because that's just silly. Paid advertising and paid reviews are a completely separate thing. It does mean I'm also not going to be reviewing people's independent works that they send to me, um, like out of the blue, or even if they message me. If they message me, as a lot of people have done recently, I've been getting at least, at least 10 emails slash messages on Instagram and Twitter asking me to review their independent books and don't get me wrong I'm I'm not angry about that. I, I admire it. I get it That's what you have to do when you're marketing yourself You have to reach out and build these connections But with me personally, I'm getting so many of those offers at the moment that I just I just don't want to do it 99% of the time when I get an independent author messaging me and linking me to their book saying, hey, can you read this and show it on your channel? A lot of them that I've seen look good, but I just, I don't want to read them, at least not now. I'm just not that interested. I'm not going to lie about it. I'm sorry. I just, I want to be honest. So I, I am being honest and I'm just saying, I just, I don't want to be a billboard for other people. That's not what my channel is. This is my channel and it's for my stuff. And I mean, not literally only my <laughs> my books and my content. I'm obviously going to be talking about other people's books and that will include independent works in the future. I'm not saying I'm never going to review independent books on this channel, but it has to be on my terms. If I review someone's book, I want it to be under the pretense that I am not 100% certain they're watching me, seeing what I'll say and planting this inherent bias in my mind. I just, I don't want to do it. That's not fun for me. That's not why I'm doing this. And that's just not what I'm interested in. So yeah, um, no shade, no tea, if you want to call it that. I have absolutely no problem with other people doing these things as long as they are transparent. And believe me when I say this, people will see through you if you are not transparent, ironically. And one more thing with that as well, like when you are trying to avoid having a bias, a lot of people think that the way to do that is to seek out flaws to mention in the video and they end up finding flaws and things they wouldn't have before and it just... It creates a whole shitstorm when you know that the person's watching you and you know that the audience is going to be judging your honesty. It's just, it's not a good formula for a book review, for an honest review. So yeah, I'm open to sponsorships if it's useful. I am not open to receiving free books in exchange for a review. I'm sorry. Receiving other stuff for free in exchange for a review, like reading glasses, and uh, got some software a little while back that helps you plan out your story, that kind of thing. I'm going to be open to that for a little while going forward just because, and I mean, it's kind of different when you're talking about, uh, you know, Fermu, the glasses company or software designers that create stuff for readers and writers compared to literal book publishers. It's just, it's just a lot easier to be honest about software and glasses because it's not 
really someone's creative work. It's just a product, you know? It's a lot different with books and publishers. Anyway, that leads us to the final item on the agenda, which is Amazon wishlist. It's become a thing lately that uh, booktubers are going on Twitter and sharing their Amazon wish lists for people to send them uh, gifts for Christmas. Like I said, there's not going to be any shade here or anything like that. To be honest, I think it's completely fine. I don't really see a problem. I mean, I understand why it would make people uncomfortable. I mean, look at it like this. You've got someone who has a significant following, like I'm talking thousands of sub subscribers, sending out a link to a literal list of stuff that they wish they had. I mean, the booktuber can play coy, but they we all know and they know that out of those thousands of followers, they're going to receive things. And I mean, it's the polite and courteous thing to say, I don't expect anything, but you know you're going to get stuff. And I mean, that makes people uncomfortable, and that's fair. I get that. But ultimately... It comes down to this. No one loses here. The booktuber likes getting gifts. Obviously. I like getting shit. <laughs> Despite everything I've just said, I, I like getting free stuff. I just don't like getting free stuff with a deadline and an expectation. The booktuber likes getting free stuff. Understandable. Completely fine. Someone likes sending them stuff and seeing them get happy and they like seeing the thing that they sent to someone on video for a lot of other people to see. It makes them feel good. It's literally a win-win situation here. No one gets hurt. Everyone's fine. It may make people uncomfortable, but so what? I mean, let's be real. It's just not a big deal. It's, it's a non-issue. If people want to get free stuff and people want to send them free stuff, just let them do it. Me personally, it's just not my thing. I don't need people to send me stuff. I'm not trying to flex or anything, but I'm, I'm good. I'm fine. If I want something, I'm in a position where I can go out and get it within reason. I just don't need people sending me stuff as much as I would appreciate it. If I was to open a PO box, it would be with the expectation that I would only receive mail. But then it goes back to the thing where that's not something I can really be a gatekeeper of. And at some point or another, someone's going to send me something, even if just for the purpose of seeing me open that on video for however many people. So I don't know. I think at some point I will have a PO box, but I'm just not going to put up a list of things I want. It just, it doesn't feel right to me, is all I'm saying. But with that said, and this is where I want to end the video, in lieu of an Amazon wish list, if you want to gift me anything, I'm actually going to leave a uh, link in the description below to a charity that is raising money over the Christmas period to send books out to children in rural, rural areas of Australia. Libraries are already dropping off like flies, so you can imagine that the libraries in rural areas were some of the first to go, and that there are areas where kids just don't have books. Sometimes by choice, and in most cases, just due to limited access. So there's this great organization that is basically trying to raise money to purchase books to send out to these areas, but more importantly, so they're receiving all these book donations from around Australia, but they need money so that they can pay for the postage to send those books out to those rural areas, places where that escapism of d diving in the fiction is more needed than almost every other area. And it's just hard for them to keep doing what they're doing. So I want to help out. I'm going to be donating and I would really appreciate it if maybe instead of sending gifts to, you know, booktubers who already have a surplus of books. Again, not throwing shade. I'm just saying, I'm going to be frank. We booktubers, we don't need you sending us books. We just don't. We have enough and we are able to get more if we need them. There are kids who need books and I think we should be sending books or the money to get the books to them. That's it. That's all. So yeah, please stop asking me to review your books because it makes me feel like a real asshole when I have to say no. Catch ya.